Okay, maybe not entirely free. But when I started researching YouTube videos on how to best scan some of my dad's old film, most of the methods required me to buy something. A new macro lens, a fancy mount, a light table, a scanning mask. What the heck is a scanning mask? Why is it $40? Anyway, all were the items for a permanent film scanning setup, but my goal was to spend zero dollars and simply try to use anything I had in the house that would work. Not only for the sake of my wallet, but almost as an exercise of could I? I mean, this is week six of quarantine here. We're just trying to stay sane. Now, there were some great videos on YouTube I used that helped me get started and actually might be useful to you too. So I'll link those up in the description if you're trying to, uh, you know, come up with your own setup. Now, I don't own a scanner, so that was out of the question, but it turns out photographing your film with a digital camera is the preferred method by many film shooters. Using a macro lens, you can fill the entire frame with the negative and get some really great results. Now, I don't have a macro lens either, but I do have some extension tubes, and these allow your lens to act like a macro lens. I slap these on my Canon 5D Mark IV using the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. I find a zoom lens works great with extension tubes as it allows you to coarsely focus using the zooming. And then you can fine tune using the actual focus. As you can see, this attractive setup allowed me to get a minimum focus distance of about eight to 10 millimeters for free. <laughs> Next, I attempted to build a negative carrier out of cardboard, all MacGyver-like. I measured and cut out a little window to hold the film flat. I then used an old lens box that perfectly fit the 70 to 200 and actually added a little bumper so the lens distance would be consistent each time I put the lens in. And it worked, I was so proud. My first scans filled the frame and were totally usable for uh, Instagram. <laughs> the main problem is I couldn't get the film flat enough. So the corner sharpness was quite soft. Like in this photo of me and my friends, boy, we were dorks. But I was happy it worked actually. And I got to see my dad posing like Prince with this shirt. Nice. Now my second attempt was a bit better. I decided to mount the camera facing downward, like many of the film scanning videos I'd seen on YouTube. I probably should have started this way. I used my C-stand to mount the camera. You can probably also get away with using a tripod. I mean, the goal here is to try to keep the camera as still as possible. For the light source, I used my iPad with a white screen. Now to prevent pixels from showing up on the scans, I used a frame around the iPad to raise the glass surface that will be holding the negatives. I then used the smaller 5x7 size glass to flatten the negative. I even MacGyvered a little hinge from gaffer's tape, again, totally proud of myself. The beauty of this elegant design is I was able to scan both 35 millimeters and larger format negatives, and it also was small enough to put away. Now, after photographing a couple of negatives, I imported them into Lightroom in order to convert them into positives. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. There's a $99 Lightroom plugin, which is great. It's called Negative Lab Pro, and it seems to be what most film folks are using. Now, I downloaded the trial, which lets you convert about 12 images to try out. But since my goal was to not spend a dime on this little project, I tried to understand what Negative Lab Pro was doing, and I converted my own images in Lightroom and built myself a little negative to positive preset. It's pretty simple. To convert your negative, all you have to do is go to your RGB curve and reverse it. You take the left side control point, which are your shadows, and what you do is drag that up to the top, and then you take your highlights control, which are found on the right, and drag those all the way down. You can then make a preset. You can also reverse the curve on each individual color, red, green, and blue, and it seems to be what Negative Lab Pro does. Overall, I was pretty happy with the results, and I got to clean up some old photographs. Now, it was great to see me as a chubster, my sister with her little goat, and my hippie uncles in good old Hoboken, New Jersey. But one of the most rewarding film scans was one of my great grandmother. She was born way back in 1900 and my dad captured a great portrait of her, kind of, of like how I remember her. After cleaning up the image a little bit, I loaded some uh, photo rag paper by Hanamule into my Canon Pixma Pro 10 and printed a photograph of her. And the thought that this beautiful print, this little piece of history existed as a tiny negative hidden away in a box is just mind blowing to me. To hold it in my hand is pretty special. I wonder what other treasures I'll dig up. 
Happy scanning, guys.